I'm pleased to announce that I've invented a new programming language called Julia++. <coughs> it's just like Julia, but in my language, you can use the plus plus incrementer. But the catch is, it only works with the letter J. I'm just kidding. There's no need for you to invent a new language. You can just use C++ code along with your Julia code. How do we do that? Well, let's find out. Welcome to Julia for Talented Amateurs, where I make wholesome Julia tutorials for talented amateurs everywhere. I'm your host, the Dabbling Doggo. I dabble. This tutorial is a continuation of the last tutorial. So I'm assuming that you've watched the first eight episodes of this series. Calling C++ code from Julia is not supported by Julia Base. So we're going to use an external package called cxxcall.jl. The Julia documentation refers to two other packages regarding C++, cxx.jl and cxxwrap.jl. cxx.jl is no longer being maintained, so it doesn't work with the latest version of Julia. I took a look at cxxwrap.jl, but to be honest, I couldn't figure out how to use it. I found another package called cxxinterface.jl, which looked promising. But again, I couldn't figure out how to use it. Now, just because I couldn't figure out how to use these packages, doesn't mean that you won't be able to figure out how to use them. So I provided links to both cxxwrap.jl and cxxinterface.jl in the description below, in case you want to check them out. As for me, I'm going to use the CXX call package. According to its GitHub page, the CXX call package is just syntactic sugar on top of the CXX interface package. So the actual work is being done by cxxinterface.jl. It looks like cxxcall.jl is in the personal repository of GitHub user Jan Weidner, but it's a registered Julia package so you can add it using Julia's package manager, just like you can with any other Julia package. There's no documentation for cxxcall.jl, but there are several test files included in the repository. So I was able to figure out how to use it based on those files. This is a long way of me saying that it's possible to use C++ code with Julia code, but the workflow is not well documented. So what I'm about to share with you is based on my own experiments and may not necessarily be considered best practice. The workflow is fairly simple, but since C++ code is more complicated than C code, I'm going to go through several different examples using the same workflow in order to demonstrate that it is indeed possible to use C++ code in Julia. With that said, Let's fire up VS Code and take a look at a Hello World example. In VS Code, start the Julia REPL by hitting Alt-J, then Alt-O. Maximize the REPL panel. Enter the package manager by hitting the closing square bracket. Activate your tutorial directory. Add the CXX call package. Type in status to check the version number. Exit the package manager by hitting backspace. Restore the REPL panel. In the Explorer panel, create a new file named 01 underscore hello dot JL. This is optional but I'm going to move the REPL panel next to my code. Okay, let's get started with a Hello World example. The first thing we're going to do is assign variable names.
File name is the name of an intermediate file that the CXX call package will create using a CXX file extension. lib is the name of the shared library file that will be created from that CXX intermediate file. func is the name of our function, which must be assigned using a Julia symbol data type. The next step is to use the CXX call package to create the CXX file. The CXX setup function allows you to embed C++ code inside of your Julia code. Just like any other C++ code, you start with a header code that's outside of the main function. The CXX new file function will write any code that you include between a pair of triple quotes into your CXX file. I've indented the C++ code for readability purposes, but the indentation is not required. Next, we're going to use the CXX macro to define our Julia function that will be using C++ code. The syntax for the CXX macro is similar to the syntax for the C call macro from Julia Base. Just like the C call function and the C call macro, you need to use an uppercase C immediately preceding the data types. In this case, C void is the data type for the function, and C string is the data type for the function parameter. Just like before, you place the actual C++ code in between a pair of triple quotes. And again, the indentation is optional. Now that we have our code, we use the CXX call package to create our intermediate file by using the CXX write code bang function. In the Explorer panel, you should see a new file named hello.cxx. Most of this code is from the code that we entered into our Julia file. But notice that the CXX call package added some code that we did not include. The CXX call package includes the C complex and C standard integer header files by default. C complex is the C++ header file for complex numbers. C standard integer is the C++ header file that defines the aliases for fixed width integer data types. Include IO stream and using namespace is from the code that we entered into our Julia file. The comment is showing you the actual Julia C call function that's working under the hood. The CXX call package adds extern C before your function definition. We didn't cover this in the C++ tutorials, but the keyword extern in C++ specifies that whatever follows has external linkage. So extern C specifies that this function is defined somewhere else and uses the C language calling convention. In addition, the CXX call package altered the name of our function for some reason. It also changed the parameter, presumably to make it compatible with C code, but it didn't alter the output syntax, which is still our original C++ code. I'm not sure that I fully understand what's going on under the hood, but it's good to know that the CXX call package is doing all of the work so we don't have to create the CXX file manually. So this is the file that we're going to convert into a shared library file. We can create the shared library file by using the run function from Julia Base. Those are backticks and not apostrophes.
Using this code is the same as adding these commands directly into the terminal window. In fact, these are the exact same commands that we used in the C call tutorial. The only difference is that we're using G++ here, rather than using GCC. For fpick, remember to try the lowercase pic first. If you get an error, then use the uppercase pic. This is the code for Windows. I don't have access to either Linux or Mac OS, so I'm not sure what the code is for those operating systems. If you're using Linux, remember that the file extension for the shared library is .so and not .dll. If you're using Mac OS, remember that the file extension for the shared library is .dylib and not .dll. In the Explorer panel, you should see a new file named libhello.dll. This is the shared library file that contains our C++ function. Next, we use the libdl package from Julius Standard Library so we can access this dynamic link library. Then, we can use the dlopen function to create a pointer to the shared library. And that's it. We should now be able to use the hello function that we wrote using C++ code. This is optional, but you can clear the REPL by using Control L. Okay, let's test our code. Hi, how are you? Let's try another one. Congratulations! You now possess the ability to embed C++ code inside of your Julia projects. And that's basically it. We're going to use this file as a workflow template. The rest of this tutorial is just going to go through different examples to demonstrate that this relatively simple workflow may be used to combine C++ features with Julia. Let's create our template by copying and pasting this code into a new file. For clarity, I'm going to change the comments at the top of this file. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Move the Rebel panel back to the Terminal panel, and close out of your Julia session by hitting Ctrl D. In the Explorer panel, create a new file named 02 underscore myad.jl. Copy and paste the template code. Start a new Julia session by using Alt-J, then Alt-O. I'm going to move the REPL next to my code. Enter the package manager by hitting the closing square bracket. Activate your tutorial directory. Exit the package manager by hitting backspace. Okay, this next example is about function overloading. Function overloading is available in C++, but not in C. So let's find out if the CXX call package can handle function overloading. Start by updating the variable names. You do not need to change the next two lines of code, so you can just run them. Nor do you need to change the header code for this example. But be careful. Depending on your project, you may need to include additional header files, so don't skip this section without reviewing it first. Next, define your function. Let's start by defining the myAd function for integers.
Now, you can copy and paste this code and just replace the cint with cdouble to overload the function to handle the double data type. Notice that Julia knows that this function has two different methods. And those are Julia methods, which are not to be confused with C++ methods. Now, we can have the cxx call package create our intermediate file. In the Explorer panel, you should see a new file named myadd.cxx. Notice in the cxx file that the cxx call package added the C complex and C standard integer header files again. It also added extern C. Interestingly, it converted our int data type into the int32 data type. But it left the double data type untouched. Back in the Julia file, we can create a shared library file by simply reusing this code without any modifications. In the Explorer panel, you should see a new file named libmyadd.dll. And then we execute the next couple of lines of code to create a pointer to the shared library file. And that's it. We should now be able to use our C++ myAdd function in Julia. Delete the test from the template and add a new test. Don't! Hopefully you got an error message. So what happened? Unlike with our ccall function and ccall macro examples, you can't simply use the numbers two and three as function arguments. For these C++ functions, you need to specify the C data types for the arguments. Now it works. Let's try the double data type. Pretty cool, right? So now we know that the CXX call package can handle a simple hello world example, and it can handle function overloading. But we can do all of that in Julia without using C++ code. What about a feature in C++ that's not available in Julia, nor available in C, like the map data structure? Can we use the C++ map data structure inside of Julia? Let's try that next. Move the REPL panel back to the terminal panel and close out of your Julia session by hitting Control D. Close the myAdd file. In the Explorer panel, create a new file named 03 underscore printmap.jl. Copy and paste the template code. Start a new Julia session by using Alt J, then Alt O. Move the REPL panel. Enter the package manager by hitting the closing square bracket. Activate your tutorial directory. Exit the package manager by hitting backspace. Okay, let's see how to use a map data structure inside of Julia. Just like before, let's go through this template and modify the code as necessary. There's no need to modify these next two lines of code, so you can just run them. In order to use the map data structure, we need to include the map header file. For our function definition, I'm going to use the code that we used when we learned how to loop over a map in C++.
All of the code in between the triple quotes is exactly the same as the C++ code that we used in a previous tutorial. Now all we need to do is execute the next four lines of code to make the magic happen. And that's it. Clear the rebel by using Control L. Now let's test our code. Amazing, right? It even printed the keys in alphabetical order, just like in C++. But before you get too excited, these are just some simple examples. Can the CXX call package handle something more complicated, like object-oriented programming? Let's try that next. Move the REPL panel back to the terminal panel and close out of your Julia session by hitting Ctrl D. Close the print map file. In the Explorer panel, create a new file named 04 underscore speak.jl. Copy and paste the template code. Start a new Julia session by using Alt J, then Alt O. Move the REPL panel. Enter the package manager by hitting the closing square bracket. Activate your tutorial directory. Exit the package manager by hitting backspace. Okay, let's see how to create a class and call a method inside of Julia. Like before, we start by updating the variable names for our project. Next, we execute the next couple of lines of code without any modifications. This header section is where we add the C++ code to create a class. This is the same C++ code from the last tutorial when we learned about classes, objects, attributes, and methods. We can also add the method definition here as well. Again, this is the exact same C++ code from the last tutorial. In the Julia function definition, we can create an object and then call the method. The C++ code in between the triple quotes is the C++ code that we used inside of the main function in the last tutorial. Now, all we need to do is execute the next four lines of code, and then we should be good to go. Clear the REPL by using Control L. Now, let's see if we can get our dog to speak. How cool is that? Who says that Julia doesn't support object-oriented programming? Even though Julia doesn't actually support object-oriented programming, you can use the CXX call package to use object-oriented C++ code inside of your Julia projects. Now, what about polymorphism? Surely, we won't be able to use polymorphism in Julia, right? Move the REPL panel back to the terminal panel and close out of your Julia session by hitting Ctrl D. 
close the speak file. In the Explorer panel, create a new file named 05 underscore polyspeak.jl. Copy and paste the template code. Start a new Julia session by using Alt J, then Alt O. Move the REPL panel. Enter the package manager by hitting the closing square bracket. Activate your tutorial directory. Exit the package manager by hitting backspace. Okay, let's see if we can use polymorphism inside of Julia. Just like before, start by assigning the variable names for your project. Execute the next couple of lines of code as is. The header section is where you add the code to create the base class and the derived classes. This is the same C++ code that we used in the last tutorial when we learned about polymorphism. This is the code for the first derived class. And this code is for the second derived class. Now we can create objects inside of the Julia function definition. For the Julia function, let's use the C++ switch conditional statement to select the output. Now we can just run through the next four lines of code. Clear the REPL by using Control L. Okay, let's test it out. Remember to use the C data type for the argument. So it works with the first derived class. And it also works with the second derived class. It works with the base class. And it looks like the default switch case is working as well. Wow. So there you have it, folks. From the simple to the sophisticated, the CXX call package can handle all of your C code from inside of your Julia project. I went through this workflow step by step because it was easier to explain. But if you look through the test files in the cxxcall.jl GitHub repository, you can find more sophisticated ways of implementing C code into your Julia project. While you're there, don't forget to leave a star to thank the package developer for creating such an awesome package and for sharing it with the rest of the Julia community. Before we go, let's revisit this diagram that I presented in episode one of this series. In just nine episodes, you have learned the basics of both C and C++. And 
you have learned how to use both C and C++ code inside of your Julia projects. So now you can combine all of the high level power of Julia with all of the low level power of C with all of the flexibility of C++. With these new skills, you will be unstoppable. Well, that does it for today. If you made it this far, congratulations. <coughs> if you enjoyed this video and you feel like you learned something new, you can support me for free by smashing that like button, leaving a comment, sharing this video, and by subscribing to this channel. If you'd like to support me financially, you can make a one-time contribution by using the Super Thanks button. You need to be logged in to see the Thanks button. For ongoing support, please consider joining and becoming a channel member. Channel members get early access to all of my new videos. New tutorials are posted on Sundays slash Mondays. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your Julia journey.